Well, good morning, and I've just come down to the lakeside to do a quick review of the Unleash, which is by Foolology. Um, so, why not stay and see what we can find out about it? Right, well this is a video I've been wanting to do for some time and I finally got round to doing it. Now I bought the Unleashed in a Kickstarter, a, oh probably I got it about a year ago um, and I still haven't, I've used it a bit but still haven't used its full potential so I thought I'd go through here what it can do, show you some of the results and hopefully I'll learn and you can see about it. Um, this is totally off my own bat. I did pay for it with my own money and I'm not being sponsored or anything. So these are my views about it. So, right, let's get on with it and see what we can find out about it. Right, so the question comes to mind, what is the Unleashed by Foolology? And, food, food, yeah and it's basically a, a remote controlled through the mobile for the camera and you can see it there and then it plugs inside to the camera and when it's initially plugged in you can see it's flashing red which means it's not connected to a mobile but once it's connected up and it's done through bluetooth it uh, goes blue so we can see there that's the um, the thing and as I say it's done through Bluetooth you've got to pair it once it's paired it reconnects very quickly it is very good and here we have hopefully we can see on the mobile the interface so we have uh, a number of options and then we'll go through each one we've got photo video time-lapse holy grail bracketing and the gallery so we'll take we'll just stop there and then we'll go on to the first item right so the first item is photo and if we go into photo there we can see the various settings for the camera now the ones that are greyed out means that you can't actually alter them like the the mode now it, the camera is currently in manual as you can see there and I can't alter that from the camera. I mean, it would be nice if some of them could be altered, but um, obviously not. The main ones that can be are the ones that we can see are in white. So we've got the shutter speed, the f-stop, the ISO, the white balance. We can alter the quality, the drive mode, I whether it go straight away or it's on a timer the metering mode and the focusing mode I think although I'm not 100% certain about this that some of the other when you're in other modes other than manual maybe some of the things you can alter that you can't alter in manual so and then basically you can see at the bottom you've got a big white button which is the button to take the, the image so if we just and we can do a photo review and s is just for a small just a small jpeg so if we just try um doing that we'll just it is i think the camera is actually focused on me so we'll just click that and check it see what happens Right, I don't know whether you heard the camera clicking then. And if we click on that, yep, you see there's a preview of the image. It is a very small preview. I did try putting it on to extra large and it does take quite a long time to download the images. So I mean, that, that, that's, it, it is very useful for doing selfies, that you get your camera set up, etc. And then 
you can go away stand where you want to be and activate the camera from here that's what I did with the the selfie that I used for the thumbnail for this so yeah it's great I uh, only on one occasion and that was on the video when I went to Wasdale Head I did start to have problems that um, I think I was going too far away I mean I don't know what the limit is for the distance it's with Bluetooth and you know Bluetooth if you get too far away the, the signal deteriorates so only one time have I had that the other good thing on this is if we look at the if we're going to the shutter speed which you've got set at a 60th of a second you'll see that it's got shutter speed and ND filters now this is one of the beauties so if I was to put a three stop ND filter on I can just go from there and go down to three stop and it will automatically alter the shutter speed in line with that so that's an eighth of a second or if I went to a 10 stop right down to 10 it would go to 15 seconds so that that's very useful and a useful way rather than having to um, calculate obviously if I alter the the shutter speed so if I say where it needs to be the 25th it doesn't alter the ND number it's just if you alter that it then corrects the shutter speed so that is a very useful application so you could use this and then yeah you don't have to be calculating or whatever so so that's the photo it's very very simple very straightforward the only thing that is a shame it doesn't have and um, well that's obviously doing down to the technology it doesn't have a preview of what you're seeing so obviously you're setting up your camera first with making sure it's correct but then you can alter the various settings so you can do that rather than doing it on the camera so it's very useful and very useful for doing selfies so that's photo right the second one and this will be very very short is video and it's very similar to the photo i haven't really used it basically you can set your camera up you can alter the various settings as as before and then you can just press the button and it will record the video so there's a video recording that it's probably not going to be very good because um, I haven't really set it up so we won't be showing that but that's that's what we can do with the video it's basically used for controlling the various settings as in photo and starting a video so that's video right we're coming down the menu the next one is time lapse so if we just click on there again a very similar thing we've got the camera settings at the top we can click on those and we can alter settings as we deem necessary now the one thing the the, the, the one focus is in red and we've got the triangle warning at the top if i click on that it's basically saying that for time lapse autofocus is not recommended and that it doesn't want it refocusing every time we do that. The way I've actually got my camera set up with back button focusing, that wouldn't be a problem because um, when it takes the pictures, it's activating it in the same way as if you're pressing the the shutter button. And if it focuses when you press the shutter button, it would focus um, in the time lapse unless you turn it on to manual focusing or you don't have that activated and I don't so that's not a problem so as I say we've got the various settings the same as the camera there and then if we go back to that we then have the various settings we've got the interval and we can have whatever interval we want I'm not quite sure what the flex is um, I'm still learning this uh, and that's um, a little beyond me at the moment but uh, as we see at the moment this is a time lapse I did yesterday 
at home out of a, the bedroom window just so I'd have something I could show you and as you can see I've chosen an interval of 10 seconds and to do 480 shots or take 480 images and I have got the frame rate in at the bottom now the frame rate is fairly immaterial here it doesn't actually affect the the video etc what but what it does do is show you that as we've got here if we do um, time lapse with 10 second intervals we've taken 480 images and if we play that back at 24 frames per second that's going to give us 20 seconds so if I was to change that to um, 50 it would be only nine seconds but we'll put it back to 24 because I do everything in 24 FPS obviously the actual setting of that is dictated to when you load obviously the images into the computer and create the time lapse from the individual images so uh, it says 24 frames per second here but I could when I get home decide to do it at a different rate and do that but I will put that time lapse up to so you can see um, what's doing uh, and this is something I want, do want to get into time lapse photography so that is very very useful um, it does it with taking f um, full frame images that you can then stitch together to do a time lapse there is on the camera to do a video time lapse and obviously I can do a time lapse on the pocket 2 here so yeah that that's that's what we've got and that's time lapse so we'll stop there and we'll go on to the next one Right, well that was time lapse and that brings us to Holy Grail. Now one thing I did forget to mention on time lapse, once you set the time lapse going you can turn your mobile off and the little thing sat on the side of the camera will control the camera and you don't need to do anything else. It will just happily click away for however long you've set. The only problem I can foresee with this is if you're doing an extremely long time lapse. I, d I was messing around with it the other day trying to get on top of this and I did one with very long intervals and the problem was that the camera is on all the time. So while the camera's on all the time, it doesn't go to sleep it is doing that and obviously it eats into the batteries so you either need very fresh batteries or you need to go somewhere where you can what I have got and I haven't used it for a long long time is I've got a dummy battery that you can put in like a battery and then you can plug it into the mains and so you get continuous power so you'd maybe have to do something like that but here we have the Holy Grail and what the Holy Grail is designed for and we're not going to go into it much because I don't understand it is for doing time lapses say a sunset or a sunrise where the light is changing significantly so we've got various algorithms to choose um, and uh, as I say I don't really understand that um, we've got the ramping order etc so yeah it, that's just a thing that's for more sophisticated time lapse and I might get into that at some point so we'll stop that there all right so that was holy grail and now we're going to go into bracketing and I think we're possibly going to do this as two sections obviously again we've got all the camera settings that we can 
alter and do what we want. And then as we come down, we've got bracketing. We've got exposure bracketing and focus bracketing. So if we look at exposure bracketing, we've got that. We've just selected that. Um, we've got three images, direction, push, um, direction, plus and minus, and we're doing it two stops, sa step size is two stops. And the adjustment order, and we've got various orders, and as far as I understand, TV means shutter, and if the shutter can't cope with it, it will alter the ISO. So I have got the camera set up. Um, let's just make sure I focused it. We'll just focus it there. And yeah, that's set up. So hopefully, if I just press the button there, one. Two, three. So that's taken the three images. Um, we'll just do it again, just to make sure. And then I will put this, process this image and put it up on the video after this, just to show what we're doing. So yeah, so that's um, exposure bracketing. Right, well that brings us to now to focus bracketing. We can see that we've gone into focus bracketing. There's the number of shots, there's the step size, which I'm not totally sure. I've just been messing around, I've done three, and the direction. So zero plus, it starts at the smallest one and moves out. So I focus the camera now on the railings or just before the railings I've up the F stop to F4 so it's got a narrow depth of field so if we now press that it will now proceed and take seven images as you can see the the, the thing is moving across on the mobile as it takes each one and it is refocusing so that one we'll have a mess around with process it and we'll show you the image up on the video after that so yeah so that's bracketing and that brings us to the final section which is gallery so if we go into gallery We've just got the one image there that we took initially, which was just the preview. Um, and obviously, if you get the previews in there, it will show them all. As you can see, the preview is not particularly uh, very good. It, it is a low-res preview just to... Um, we'll get rid of it. Just to basically to show you that you've taken an image and a rough idea, as I say, to do the full video uh, to do the full res image was taking quite a while to download onto the thing so that's going through all the things on the app and we'll leave it there for that and then shortly we'll have a talk about my overall feelings about this as we head home so we'll see you a little bit later Right, well hopefully you've enjoyed that run through of the Unleash. I will put up details in the uh, show more tab or the description tab at the bottom uh, a bit about it. I got it in a Kickstarter campaign and I think it was getting on for £150 which whether it's worth it or not I don't know. It is quite good, it has its limitations 
it can do quite a lot in terms of controlling the camera but you're not getting any feedback in terms of you're not seeing the image so you can't totally use it you can't put the camera somewhere slightly inaccessible and then totally control it with that obviously if you can get it set up and focused and that you can then use that to to snap away which as I've said is useful for for doing selfies etc the the bracketing is quite good although the bracketing on the camera is fairly uh, good as well what, but what I didn't realize it did was the focus bracketing so that might prove useful we'll see it's I've only just discovered that it was on there and this is the first time I've actually tried it so we'll have to see how well the images come out and how well they are focused etc so yeah we'll play around with that but it, it is going to potentially be brilliant for time lapses it's something I'd like to get into a bit more um, I suppose the only problem is sometimes when you're doing a time lapse you're wanting to set the camera going on the time lapse and do other things but obviously if you're using your main camera to um, take your images and do the time lapse you can't do both at the same time but no I mean um, to be able to do long time lapses where you just set it and it's going for um, an hour or, or more I think the one I did um, yesterday was about an hour and a half it was running for as I say there is a problem if you're doing a very long one that the camera is constantly on it doesn't go to sleep between images so if it's constantly on there is a potential of it eating into the batteries so so yeah it's um, it's good hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing why not subscribe and please please do comment this will be put up as with some of the others I'm doing sort of what am I calling them random midweek videos so it's it's not distracting from the main theme of the channel which is the, the videos that go up on Sunday of getting out into the environment and getting some nice landscape images so this will be quite a, a long one compared to <laughs> some of the other ones I've done but it is a bit of a review so and this is a, an, an initial reaction to it I haven't had it that long and I haven't really used it that much the other thing I'd like to do is do a, an update on the platy ball which I've probably had oh a couple of years I did an initial uh, review of it some time ago and it may, may be nice to update that so anyway we'll we'll leave it there oh as you see I'm puffing and <laughs> come up a little bit of a slope which when you're trying to talk as well so anyway we'll stop rambling and we'll see you on the next video